Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Wild Rose Granny Square. Now this special granny square is featured in three of my bag designs that are all part of the Wild Rose series. Now this is the original granny square. It's composed of six rounds and it's actually featured in my Wild Rose backpack right here in the center. Now next we have this granny square which is composed of seven rounds. It has this additional round here and it's actually featured in my Wild Rose Market Bag right over here. This is the largest of the squares. And lastly, we have this small square here, which is composed of five rounds. And it's used in my newest bag design, which is the Wild Rose Shoulder Bag. Now, these three granny squares all have the same four rounds, initial four rounds, but this round five differs from these round five, so please keep that in mind when you're following the respective granny squares for each bag. So we're gonna learn how to crochet the Wild Rose granny square and the variations so we can work on these bags. We are going to be using 24-7 cotton for this design, medium worsted weight yarn. It's mercerized cotton, so it's very strong. Get your 3.75 millimeter hook ready. And I also wanted to quickly show you this too. You can change up the color scheme and look how beautiful that is. So you can play around with the colors round by round if you would like to add some color variation to your bags as well. Let's begin with round one. We're gonna make a magic ring and you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now this actually counts as one double crochet and one chain one. Next, you're gonna work a double crochet into the magic ring and then chain one. Now you're gonna continue making double crochets and then chain ones into the magic ring until you have 12 double crochets and 12 chain ones. So once again, this is the first double crochet, second double crochet, third double crochet, and then you should have chain ones in between. So, so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I need to make one more double crochet. So I'm going to work it in here. And don't forget that chain one at the very end. And now you're gonna get this tail and you're gonna pull it tight and watch that initial gap disappear. So that's the magic loop. I love how there is no gap there. And next, the pattern says to slip stitch into the third chain of the beginning chain four. So we are gonna find that third chain, which so there's one, two, three, we're gonna go into here and we're gonna slip stitch here to close up the round. So inside there, there we go. Now that we finished round one, let's begin round two. Now we want to slip stitch into the chain one space. This is the chain one space right here, so we're gonna work a slip stitch. We want to begin the round over here, which is why we're moving here. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then it's time to begin our first puff stitch. Now to work a puff stitch, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the gap, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we're gonna do that two more times. Yarn over, insert into the gap, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the gap, pull up a loop. Now if you count, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. Next, you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops. For the first one, I find it easier to go through the first six loops and then go through the last loop. And that is your first puff stitch made. Now we're gonna repeat that again because we're gonna, we're gonna put puff, stitch into, puff stitches into all these gaps, but they're gonna be separated by chain one. So chain one, and then once again, work a puff stitch in this next gap. So we're doing the same thing. You should have seven loops and then pull all the way through. Chain one to separate. Once again, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. And then pull through all seven loops. And remember, don't forget that chain one. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, we are supposed to have 12 puffs, so it's always important to count. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 puffs. There's a chain one. Now to close off the round, we're going to find the third chain of that initial chain three. So it's right over here. We are going to find it. Okay. And then slip stitch to close. So we have finished round two, which is the puff stitch round. Now let's begin round three. Once again, we want to work our first stitch over here. So we need to make our way over there. So I'm going to slip stitch two into this gap. And next we're gonna work a beginning cluster in this space. So beginning cluster looks like this. One, two, three. You're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. But it's different than the puff stitch because this time we're actually gonna yarn over and draw through two loops. So that is an additional step that is different than the puff stitch. Next up we're gonna yarn over, insert into the gap, pull up a loop, and once again, do that extra step. Pull through both loops. And for the beginning cluster, when you have three loops, one, two, three, you're gonna yarn over, pull through, chain one. Now we're gonna work the next cluster here, but this was the beginning cluster. So now we're going to work a regular cluster here. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. You're gonna repeat that two more times. Yarn over, insert into the gap, Yarn over. So here we have three loops. Repeat one more time because at the end we want to have four loops on our hook. So one, two, three, four. Then you know the cluster is complete. So we're going to yarn over, pull through. Chain one. Now we're going to work another cluster into this gap. Now, the neat thing is here we have circles, but we're actually gonna start building up our square. So once you have three clusters, one, two, three, you're going to chain three. One, two, three. This is gonna help form the corner. So next you're gonna work a cluster over here. And once I'm finished with this cluster, you can see the corner of the square begin to form. So this is a corner here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, chain three here, one, two, three, chain three. So you're gonna always have a chain three in this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. So let's continue that around. I'm nearing the end of round three, which is our first cluster round. So to double check, you need one, two, three clusters, a corner, one, two, three clusters, a corner, one, two, three clusters, a corner, one, two, three. So as you can see, it's time to do the corner, which is chain three, one, two, three. And then once again, to close up the round, you're gonna slip stitch to the top of that chain three, which is over here. And then you have finished. Ooh, if only I could get it through. <laughs> there we go. Now, so I always like to double check just to make sure it's even so you have the four corners and three clusters in between and we are finished round three. To begin round four, once again, we need to move to this chain one space. So I'm gonna chain two. So I'm chaining in here, come into this chain gap. And once again, this is another cluster round. So we're gonna do that beginning cluster. One, two, three. Work the beginning cluster. And then the beginning cluster, you only need three loops. Pull through, chain one once again. So as you can see, this is the next chain space. We're gonna work just a normal cluster in here. Okay, I need to wait till I have four loops on the hook and then I know we're ready to close it out. One, two, three, four. Now, this is gonna be something a little bit different. See how this is the chain three gap? This is the corner. So we're going to accentuate that corner even more. So what we're gonna do is, oops, I did not work the chain one gap. I can't forget that. Okay, so we're going to work a cluster in the corner, just a regular cluster. Okay, 
Okay, so there's our first cluster. To accentuate that corner even more, we're gonna actually chain three. One, two, three. And then in that same chain three gap, we're gonna work another cluster. So that is what differentiates this round from the previous round. Every time we hit a corner like that, we are going to put a cluster, chain three, cluster. So here we're gonna work regular cluster, regular cluster, cluster, chain three, cluster. So we're gonna accentuate in each corner, we're gonna work a cluster, chain three, cluster. So let's do that. I'm about to close up round four, so I wanted to show you what this looks like. I always like to hold the corners like this just to make sure everything looks correct. So there should be four corners, each separated by four clusters. So we have one, two, three, four, corner, one, two, three, four, and a corner, one, two, three, four, and a corner. And then this one is gonna go with this one. So one, two, three, four. So in total, you should have 16 clusters. Now to close up the round, once again, we're going to slip stitch into this, um, the third chain of the beginning chain three, and we have completed round four. Now, as a reminder, the first four rounds are the same for all the granny squares. However, round five is where it starts to differ. So first off, I'm going to show you the round five of the Wild Rose shoulder bag, the smallest one. So we're going to slip stitch two to get into that chain one space. And for this round five, we are gonna be working single crochets. So I'm gonna chain two. And I'm just gonna work two more single crochets in there because that initial chain two counts as one single crochet. Now over here in this next chain one gap, I'm gonna work three single crochets. One, two, three. Now over here, you can see we're approaching a corner stitch because of that chain three. In here, we're, we are going to work three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets. So there's one, two, three, we're gonna chain two, one, two, this is for the corner, and then work another three single crochets within that same space. One, two, three. So as you can see here, we are creating a fifth round where you're putting three single crochets into each gap and into each corner where there's the chain three, you're going to work three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets, all within that same space. I've worked my single crochets around and now I'm working a slip stitch into the second chain of that chain two and round five is complete. It's very important that you block your, your granny squares so that they will lay flat. So this is the round five that I used for my wild rose shoulder bag. Now I'm going to show you the round five that I used for the market bag and for the backpack. All right, so to begin round five for the backpack and the market bag, once again, you're going to slip stitch two to get to that chain gap. And this time you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And you're going to work two double crochets. So this time, instead of single crochets for the entire round, you are going to be working with double crochets so it gives you more height. Okay. Next up, we are going to work three double crochets into here. One, two, three. Okay, next up, you're gonna see we have this corner stitch. So in the corner, we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, three and this time we are going to chain three one two three so this accentuates the corner and we're going to work another three double crochets within that same space so we're really developing that corner one double crochet two double crochets and we need one more to finish this off here in this corner so as you can see here, we are working three double crochets, three double crochets, and in each corner, three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. 
So here we're gonna work three double crochets, three double crochets, three double crochets, and in the corner, you do that three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. So let's continue that around. Okay, so you can see that I've worked all the double crochets around. Now to close off, I find the top of the chain three, work a slip stitch, and then we are done round five. To begin round six, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, now we're going to double crochet in each double crochet until we reach the double crochet before the chain three. So I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna be doing seven. So here we go, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. So we have worked seven sing um, double crochets, and as you can see, this is the double crochet that is before the chain three. So we're gonna skip this one. Next, we're gonna work three double crochets. One, two, three. So this is the corner. Once again, to accentuate the corner, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and work another three double crochets in here. One, two, Now we've rounded that corner. Next, we're going to skip this first double crochet. We're going to begin in here. So the next one says that we are supposed to be working 13 double crochets. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So once again, we're going to skip this double crochet right before the chain three and we're gonna work that corner once again three double crochet chain three three double crochet in here so I've worked my 13 double crochets along this side once again skip this double crochet and then we're gonna work three double crochets two three we're gonna chain three to accentuate the corner. One, two, three, and then another three double crochets. So we're gonna continue this pattern all the way around for round six. I'm getting ready to close up round six. You can see that there are one, two, three, four, five double crochets. I'm gonna close up the round by working a slip stitch there. Now for round seven, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now this actually counts as one double crochet and a chain one. We're actually gonna skip the next stitch and work a double crochet here. And you're gonna continue this pattern by chaining one, skipping one, and working a double crochet across until we reach that chain three gap. So chain one, skip this one, go into this one, so this is round seven, and once again, you only use round seven when you're working the market bag. Skip this one, now we're into this. Okay, there's our next double crochet, chain one. Now, as you can see, we're gonna skip this. This is the last double crochet before the chain three gap. So we're working a double crochet here, and we're actually not going to chain one, because this double crochet is going to get lumped in with the other double crochet, so we're working two double crochets in this gap. This is the second double crochet in the gap. And then we're actually going to chain three. One, two, three, and then work another two double crochets within this same gap. So we'll see what this looks like. So as you can see, we've just turned this corner. So there was this last double crochet here. And then within the cap, gap, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. Now next up, we're going to work 
one double crochet into this stitch right over here. So this is important because you might think it's this one, but it's actually this one right over here because this is the next double crochet. So this one gets lumped in with these two. So it kind of looks like a three and a three. And then we're gonna continue that pattern where we chain one, we're gonna skip this one, and we're gonna work a double crochet into here. So we're gonna continue this exact same pattern across where we're chaining one, double crocheting one, and skipping one all the way across until you reach the next corner. And you're gonna work the same corner here, here, and here. I'm approaching the end of round seven. Now to close up this round, you see this is chain four. One, two, three, four. We're actually going to slip stitch into the third chain. So that would be right over here and close it up. And we are finished round seven. So if you were to make the Wild Rose Market Bag, you will need to crochet 13 of these but soon you will have the pattern memorized once you've been doing so many. Now for the backpack, you just need to make one for the center. If you're going to make the Wild Rose shoulder bag, you will need to make 15 of these, but this is quite small. These ones go by really fast since it's just five rounds. And once again, please make sure to block your granny squares as it really helps them lay flat and they have a cleaner, crisper square look to them. So I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. Enjoy the wild rose bags.